Alright, so two of the most popular words you will hear in concealed carry and uh, everyday carry. We're going to talk about them today. What's up YouTube? My name is Hexshot and today we are going to break down compact and subcompact and I'm going to lay it out for you as I see it. Uh, so if you're looking at concealed carry, these two words are thrown around a bunch. They're written on the side of the gun. They're written on the box. They're written on the frame. They're written everywhere. Compact and subcompact. <clears throat> so basically, we're going to break this down. Uh, one thing I want to say, first of all, if you have been subscribed to us for a while, man, thank you guys for watching and always supporting us. If you think you're vi seeing this video twice, there was like 40 of you that just watched this video. And uh, when I uploaded it, it did not look good at all so we're gonna try this again I'm sorry about that but uh, if you're not a subscriber just make sure you click that little red button down below and you'll be linked to us every time we do a video alright so compact versus subcompact first thing you want to look at and be wary of is how is the manufacturer pushing these guns to the market uh, putting these guns in your hand is gonna be essential especially when we're talking about this uh, one of the guns that we did not too long ago the p320 compact absolutely loved it awesome gun but it was more like a full-size gun uh, so it you know when you when you see that if you don't know you would say well compact you know 15 rounds of nine millimeter man this is awesome i i what else could i need uh, the XD Mod 2 was the same way. It was a subcompact gun, or that's at least what it said on the on the slide and everything else. But it was the size of this gun. And this may not look like a big gun, but we'll talk about that here in a minute. So let's start with the uh, with the compact. So compact guns generally are going to give you a lot of the features of the Big Brother, depending on which line of guns you're looking at. Uh, like we're just using the uh, M&P compact here and uh, the shield for the subcompact but the compact of the M&P you get full ambi controls which is kind of cool if you're a left-handed shooter so there's your slide stop your magazine button is reversible as well alright you get uh, let me pull this out you get interchangeable palm swells so with this version you pull this little tool out and you can interchange the palm swells or the back straps to your liking to fit your hand so that's kinda cool uh, what else here you also get your slot up here for a light or a laser so if you're looking at home defense and things like that compact options can be a good option uh, also your round count this is 12 plus 1 capacity so that is a pretty good capacity for the size of gun we're talking about you also get a gun, depending on the size of your hands, of course, that is generally going to feel uh, pretty good in the hands. Even though it says compact, it is a, uh, it, it's wide enough to, to really fit your hand pretty well. So compact guns give you interchangeability as well, which is one thing. So if you have the big brother and you want to go with the compact, you can take that uh, full-size M&P mag slap it in the sucker and you can run with it all day so uh, that's pretty cool so you have interchangeability a lot of times you have ambi controls uh, you also have uh, a slide which generally is going to be a lot easier to rack now the M&P's have stiff springs in them anyways but uh, with this with the compact it's going to be easier to manipulate as well so you have a lot going for it in this gun. You have decent capacity, ambi controls, uh, the option to change out your back straps, um, endless accessories and things like that. So you may be thinking, well, if you have all that, I have a compact gun, why do I need to go to this? Well, let's talk about it. Subcompact guns, what will they give you? And one thing to keep in mind, I guess the moral of the story here is, um, you are going to lose and gain no matter which way you go alright so compact you're gonna be able to take this thing to the range let's say you have 500 bucks that's all you have you have to be able to protect yourself you want to go to the range and have a good time 
and also you want something for the house. Well, this right here can fill those roles for you. But let's say concealed carry is really on your mind. Maybe you want to look at this. So what does this give you? It gives you 7 plus 1 capacity in a single or staggered stack magazine. No ambi controls. So you see your slide stop. The magazine button is not reversible on this model. Uh, so that's taken away. The interchangeable palm swell. There is none. You have that. You do not have that option anymore. Also, your light and laser is gone. Now you can get like crimson traces, and you can get ones that kind of take the uh, form or replace part of the trigger guard in here. Uh, but generally speaking, no lighter laser slot at least. You're also going to get a gun, and let me show you. If you if you have to leave right now, this is the biggest difference and I will have a better close-up to show you guys but the difference in this width and that right there is huge inside the waistband a lot of you guys have uh, tried it I'm sure if you haven't try it this right here makes all the difference that's where the money in your single stacks really come into play uh, one thing to consider as well uh, along with the uh, width of the guns is the grip length. Now the grip length is what you are actually trying to conceal. We're going to get a good picture of that for you, but check that out. Your 7 plus 1 capacity gun in grip length is actually longer than the 12 plus 1 capacity. So that's something to consider too. Technically this is going to be a little bit easier. Not much. Not much at all and, and a lot of these differences are small, but uh, your compact gun in this case is actually shorter than the single stack so that's something to keep in mind too you're losing five rounds by going with the single stack but you're gaining a little bit in the grip length uh, so also a weight difference so this one unloaded the shield is going to be right at 20 ounces this one's going to be 24 and a half ounces some people say it's not a big difference I can tell you you load them up it is all right now aftermarket accessories for the shield are actually pretty good because this gun is so popular. Uh, so that is nothing that you have to worry about on this model. You get basically the same sight setup, which is kind of nice. Uh, they are steel and they are adjustable. On a lot of the uh, smaller guns, sometimes they're fixed depending on uh, which brand you go with. But So with all that being said, uh, we're going to talk about shootability, but with all that being said, you go from 12 plus 1 capacity, ambi controls, light and laser slot, uh, changeable backs, and then you go down to 7 plus 1, no ambi controls, no light laser, nothing. But inside the waistband, this gun right here is going to be 10 times more comfortable than this one right here. Trust me, I know. I've been carrying these for a while. Uh, it's just the way it is. Now, the thickness is what is going to make, literally, the gun stick out, make your pants stick out, make it uncomfortable. Also, the weight difference is literally what is going to weigh you down. Alright, so now let's talk about shootability. So, with these thinner grips and these guns, some people get the feeling that it's just really thin and it doesn't give your hand enough to hold on to when you're trying to shoot. Now, my opinion of the shield, it's actually a great shooter for the size and category gun we're talking about. But this gun, maybe, to newer shooters, can be snappy. The lighter you go in the subcompacts, the snappier it's going to be, depending on your round. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. I can tell you that this gun, under normal conditions, under you know picking up your speed a little bit rapid fire whatever uh, this gun is more controllable you have more weight and more mass to suck up the recoil of that round so shootability also nod to the compact um, and a lot of what I'm saying as far as carry with the compact let me go ahead and say this if you have a good holster it can negate a lot of this but it's not going to take away the physics of it this is a chunky little pistol inside the waistband this is nice and thin, less than an inch thick right here. And the smallest little differences inside your pants when you're talking about a hunk of metal and plastic really makes a big difference. 
So that's what you want to keep in mind. Uh, obviously, getting these guns in your hand and shooting them is going to be a, uh, a very important thing. Watching videos like this to maybe help you out buy in your buying decision will, will, will certainly help. But, you know, getting these guns in your hands. But one thing you need to, you need to really think about is your options. What you want. Do you want this to be a gun that you're going to carry to the range and use at the house? And all that. 7 plus 1 capacity for a home defense gun is absolutely... Um, if that's all you got, then that's that's fine. Uh, but it's it, it wouldn't make me feel comfortable for just home defense having you know just seven plus one because you get nervous, you start shooting through walls and and crap. You know you never know. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind and consider. So and also with this gun, it's going to be harder. Let's say you have a weakness in your hands for whatever reason, it's going to be harder to rack that slide. So with all that being said, a harder gun to shoot, <laughs> a gun with less options, uh, it does, to some people it doesn't make a lot of sense, but when you put it inside the waistband, it makes all the difference, this gun being as thin it is, as it is. Uh, also a pretty shootable gun for the size that we're talking about. Now I'm sure there'll be somebody that comes in here and says, man, I carry a steel 1911 all day with... 14 extra mags you're a pussy well <laughs> most of us most of us are not comfortable with uh steel 1911s and full-size glocks with 13 extra mags all day long and that's one thing to consider as well you know depending on how often you carry all day long a gun like this may not be a very comfortable option for you shootable versatile maybe not the best option for inside the waistband so there you go. There is compact versus subcompact. These, of course, are just two options out there. Uh, the differences are going to change depending on model. Some of your subcompacts, like the uh, PPS and the XDS, I believe, have uh, like two options for an interchangeable backstrap. So sometimes you get that. Sometimes you do get that one slot that you can put a little lighter laser on it. Generally speaking though, you're still going to have low round count, um, so you really have to make that decision. So what you really want to think about is, is the comfort and the concealability worth the loss of round count when you're moving to a subcompact gun. Alright, so there you go. Compact versus subcompact. I hope that this will help some of you guys out, you guys and girls that are looking at concealed carry. Make sure you guys subscribe to us down below. We will see you on the next one. And as always, hold them down.